Welcome to this presentation for the Masters in Education and Instructional Technology at Kennesaw State University. My name is Chris Stevenson and in this presentation my objective is to give you an overview of my capstone. Firstly, a little bit about me and actually it's pretty important to the context of this project. I'm originally from Antrim, Northern Ireland. With 18 years in education, I have experience in systems ranging from Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, North Carolina Public Schools and Georgia Private Schools. I've been teaching geography and history in the Atlanta International School for the past seven years, hence my love of maps. For the past five years, I've also been a consultant professional development leader for the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Programme, or MYP, allowing me to teach all over the world. This academic year, I've been the instructional technology teacher for 6th through 12th grade at AIS. My migration from classroom teacher to an instructional technologist led to this capstone project. The title of my capstone project is Sustaining and Deepening Technology Integration in a One-to-One -one Laptop Program in an International School Setting. So what is an international school? Atlanta International School, or AIS, is a private co-educational school in Buckhead, Georgia, offering three of the four International Baccalaureate, or IB, programs. As you can see from the outline of our program, the international school environment is a thriving, intrinsic, complicated and very vibrant place to be. AIS embarked on an ambitious technology strategic plan in the 2011-2012 school year. Part of this plan was to put laptops into the hands of all 6th through 12th grade students to enhance their daily learning. The big idea was to create a learning environment that was not curtailed by access to classrooms with computers, but to develop a robust school-wide movement where laptops integrate it seamlessly into the curriculum for teaching and enhanced student engagement for learning. For faculty, there were some challenges in the roadmap ahead. With student access more prevalent than ever before, there was a need to explore and place the instructional delivery process beyond the teacher computer. A big question started to emerge. What professional development might faculty need to achieve this? But here was the blunt reality check. In the AIS professional growth model, there was little reference to technology integration. Further to this point, in the 2013-14 academic year, there was no formal school professional development time spent on technology integration as a focus. So this is where I proposed a solution. In my new role, I would reach out to another international school of similar size and program offerings and evaluate their progress integrating technology into their one-to-one -one laptop program using a survey I would then deploy to the AIS faculty. By benchmarking the two similar contexts, I could best determine what already developed technology integration tools might work in a very unique international school environment like AIS. At a subsequent faculty meeting, I plan to synthesize these findings into a short presentation, use this data to engage interest and recruit volunteer teachers to pilot the use of three technology tools using the Middle Years Program or MYP Unit Planner to assist them with deepening their use of the one-to-one -one laptop in the classroom for teaching, their subject and to inform their future professional development goals. The three technology integration tools were proposed for evaluation in this project are, firstly, Levels of Teaching Innovation, or LOT, which provides a four-step framework by which teachers can reflect on their use of technology in their classroom. The second, the Substitution, Augmentation, Modification and Redefinition, or SAMR. This model supports and enables teachers to design, develop and infuse digital learning experiences that utilise technology. And finally, TPAC, which stands for Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge. This framework identifies the knowledge teachers need to know in order to teach effectively with technology. But this plan hit a major problem. I was unable to carry out the faculty-wide survey. Discussions with the Director of 21st Century Teaching and Learning conceded there had been too many faculty surveys sent out in the preceding months, with more to come due to many overall school foci this year. Faculty had become mistrustful of surveys and there was a fatigue climate in survey taking. I hit a very major roadblock. I was rapidly learning that the best laid plans in a busy, intrinsic international school like ours are not always easy to implement. However, there was one part of the plan that was salvageable. 
Instead of contacting just one international school, I reached out to the technology directors of 10 international schools of similar size and program offerings with a survey about their one-to-one -one laptop programs. Aid replied to the survey from Vietnam, France, two different schools in Singapore, Germany, Switzerland, Canada and Poland. The intention here was to, at the very least, understand the use of laptops in other international schools and the challenges that we may be facing here in AIS. For example, when presented with a multiple choice question, what digital platforms do students use? Six of the eight respondents to the survey said that their schools insisted on student ownership of various platforms from sixth grade onwards. The device grows, or I would argue, ages with the student. This mirrors the one-to-one -one laptop program in AIS, where students own and maintain their own MacBook devices from sixth grade onwards. The next question was to ascertain what type of one-to-one -one devices were used across the school. While this was a multiple choice question, all responding schools elected to respond to their own particular school makeup in terms of access to devices using the open-ended other option. This illustrated a very complex school climate across all the schools surveyed. Compiling this data alone conceded the very intrinsic system of the international school technology across the world. It was becoming increasingly apparent from this data that one-to-one -one laptop programs in the international school environment are a tricky and complex beast, driven by very unique school contexts, resources, and leadership ideas of best practice, the very circumstances I was finding myself in at AIS. In terms of professional development, most schools reported time and scheduled teacher workdays with further support from technology integrationists and coaches. But when further questioned, this time was often eroded because of complex schedules and climates in the schools. One director reported there were many competing initiatives, taking time for professional development. Another commented that if the focus of the technology professional development is not closely aligned with the school's goals, then it's difficult to get teacher buy-in, especially in high-stakes testing classrooms. I was in that situation. So many competing initiatives in AIS, with technology not at the forefront of the school's goals. So I had to rethink and fast. How could I build my working pilot group from across the community, in a busy international school, without official professional development time sanction, working only in the confines of my role as a technology integration teacher? The answer actually came from one of those innumerable foci. Several faculty, including myself, were already involved in another project focus in this academic year. The Atlanta K-12 Design Challenge was an opportunity to leverage already engaged teachers through a process that they were already using. Using this model, I designed the following method to engage teacher involvement in the pilot. Firstly, in design thinking, it's important to empathize with the user. I interviewed various faculty personally and sent out a 6th through 12th grade email asking what technology would you like to lunch and learn with for teaching and learning. Electronic responses were gathered using a Padlet link sent with that original email. As time was now running short, I had simply elected to use a lunch and learn model. Common in workplaces and in the IB, this professional model of growth takes place over the lunch period. The next step was to define. I took this data and looked for the most common needs of our faculty. With a small defined list of possible professional development offerings, I spent some time and ideate. I crafted six short 30 minute professional development hands-on learning experiences and discussions to deepen attending faculty conversation to the use of laptops in their classrooms and how they integrate technology. I built a prototype learning platform a website that I developed to curate all of the resources and discussions during delivery of each Lunch and Learn. And then I tested. From January to March, I delivered six workshops with follow-up visits to classrooms and collaborative meetings to harness my pilot teaching team. Attendance was low at all of the Lunch and Learns, despite reminders by email, in the weekly face-to-face -face faculty briefing and in the bulletin, and a website link Five members of faculty, however, did attend regularly, with many anecdotally reporting that lunchtime duties 
Meetings and other student organization commitments curtailed their attendance. I learned in order for professional development to really stick or get into a school climate, there needs to be legitimate buy-in and time for faculty to truly engage and administrative support. However, despite the odds, three faculty agreed to join the one-to-one -one laptop technology integration pilot team. John D, who's English, and an MYP product design teacher and the leader of the design group of subjects. Tim M, who is American and is an MYP history teacher. And Chris A, who is Canadian and an MYP digital design teacher. I met with the three teachers to discuss the new MYP unit planner and the choice of technology integration tools to share findings from the International School Survey. The group articulated that choosing one tool rather than all three to test would be more beneficial to them as a team. Given that most of our benchmark schools use SAMR with their faculty, the solution seemed obvious. However, the discussion gravitated to delivery of a previous SAMR professional development in 2013 school year that had left no visible effect on the faculty technology integration and curriculum planning or in professional development to date. As the group explored the resource links I had supplied for TPAC and Low-T, they gravitated towards the Low-T framework and we began to whiteboard the possibilities. Various Low-T tools were curated on a resource web page on the Lunch and Learn website. The pilot teachers clearly saw how they could use the Current Instructional Practices or CIP sniff test in the MYP unit planner section prior to teaching to review their current practice. Each teacher shared an MYP unit of inquiry that they were about to teach and in further one-to-one -one meetings we walked through their MYP unit plan using the sniff test to evaluate their current technology integration before teaching and integrated this into the written curriculum map. Having augmented the MYP unit planner original design with the components of low T that we had discussed for the section on reflection prior, during and after teaching, the pilot teachers completed their sniff test and selected two lessons to score using the heat rubric before they taught them. I scheduled time to come and observe and walk through these lessons. The pilot teachers used this rubric on their lesson prior to teaching. I used the same rubric during the lesson walkthrough and made additional notes. These walkthroughs lasted the whole hour of the lesson and gave the instructional technologist opportunity to observe the teacher and talk to the students about their work. In the post walkthrough collaborative meetings, the MYP unit planner was revisited and the section on reflection after teaching completed using the heat scores and suggestions from the technology integration list. The ideas were documented for consideration for the next time this MYP unit of inquiry would be taught to promote the deeper use of the technology and discussion about professional development needs to make these strategies happen in the future if necessary. Having completed the whole process, each teacher was asked to participate in a short evaluation of their experience to capture their data as to whether this method deepened technology integration into their subject teaching and improve on the deliverable of using low T as part of the MYP unit planning process and its usefulness in thinking about teacher professional development growth. The resulting units of inquiry set this work into context. John D was enthusiastic about my feedback to take the laptop beyond the project documentation of a process journal. This resulted in a discussion and thinking about touch device BYOD for use of apps like Genius Scan and Erasma in his class to augment the use of the laptop device. Students can more easily use the touch devices for photos, scans and augmented reality and use the laptop to curate their final creations. In his exit survey, John D reported that low T and reflection help me focus on the fact that students may have experience using other devices and software that they may be able to use and not just the technology I have introduced them to. This helped him to articulate strategies that would deepen the future technology use by students completing this unit of inquiry in the future, 
visualize technology he might target to learn in professional development and devices that he might like to procure. procure. Chris A gave very positive feedback on the exit survey as well, saying that he liked that there was an opportunity for feedback and collaboration in teaching strategies. The observer, me, worked with students and asked them questions about their work. He felt comfortable about this process. Chris A further iterated that because he was leaving AIS at the end of the academic year, he would be able to leave behind good MYP units of inquiry for the new faculty in his written curriculum to onboard with. This method of technology integration was sustainable beyond his individual tenure. Tim M was the teacher most open to using this process. In the two walkthroughs that I did, he did not bring out the laptops with the students at all. When we reflected, he discussed lots of great ideas, but felt he needed help to curate these using the technology available. Tim M expressed the wish to team teach the remainder of this MYP unit of inquiry with me in ongoing classes. In just a few lessons, we went from whole class discussion using the whiteboard and markers to students using their laptops to collaborate using Padlet, curating resources from the library libguides for evaluation of the Islam questions they wanted to investigate. I learned many dispositions necessary for a technology integrationist by conducting this project. Firstly, building authentic relationships based on a focused goal matters. Data presentations are one way, I clearly explored another. International schools are complicated places and no one size fits all. However, by adopting a tried method of technology integration and embracing the already mandated method of collaborative planning for the written, taught and assessed curriculum through the MYP unit planner, I feel I have succeeded in delivering a robust method by which technology integration in a one-to-one -one laptop setting can be considered more deeply for teaching and learning in a sustainable way, even across many hundreds of MYP schools across the world. And from this, big things may grow. All three teachers have shared the process with colleagues already. I will be reaching out to the international schools in the original survey to share this experience and the Augmenta MYP unit planner. By focusing on the low T solution, I have become more interested, interested in deepening my personal knowledge so I have my own professional development goal next year, to attend official training for this tool for the development of the one-to-one -one laptop program in my new role as Academic Technology Director in St Edward's School. I would like to thank my very flexible and professional pilot team. My mentor, Alan Price, was invaluable to guiding the process and providing the contacts in his professional learning network in the international school community. I would also like to thank those schools that responded to my survey with interesting and thoughtful answers to help my understanding of the holistic international school community as well. Thank you.